Uh, you've said it's a tipping point for Telstra. Uh, is it drastic time that requires such drastic measures? Uh, well, hi, Matt. Look, great to be uh, with you today. Look, it is a very important set of announcements today because, as you said, uh, we believe we're at a tipping point. The telco industry is going through a very challenging and dynamic period right now. But at the same time, demand for telecommunication products and services has never been greater. But we have to change the way in which we deliver them as an industry. And we have to be more prepared today to disrupt ourselves than we ever have done before. And that's fundamentally what we're announcing. Shares selling down, though, in the order of about 5.5%. As I mentioned, they were off by uh, more than that at the start of trade today. It appears as though uh, the market isn't really buying what you're selling. And, in fact, some commentary today says that there's no clear growth plan in what you've outlined to excite investors. What would your response be to that? Well, look, I think the thing is, I mean, the reality is we, we, we are going to have to make some short-term tough economic decisions ultimately for long-term growth. But, but ultimately, this is about redefining the nature of telecommunication products and services in the Australian market. Customers are frustrated with the complexity, the charging, uh, the service they're getting from their telcos today. And we're going to fundamentally, fundamentally radically change that. It means that we have to leave behind about $500 million worth of charges that we've previously um, mm. received for things like excess charges, you know, the sort of things that really frustrate customers. But we believe that's the right decision. And we're also going to radically simplify our products and services, which enables us to simplify our business, which leads to a radical uh, increase in our productivity program and reduction in costs. And Andrew, cutting costs is certainly one lever that you do have control of, but it seems some shareholders are still worried about the growth prospects, even in the face of cost cuts. What is your message to those out there who are concerned that the growth plan is not intact here? Well, look, the reality is we have been continuing to grow our customer base. In fact, we had another strong quarter uh, in the June quarter. Uh, Telstra has very strong share but what we've got to do is we've got to change the nature of products and services. And ultimately, we believe this will encourage more customers to buy more services from us. That will drive growth. And of mm. course, the other thing is we're investing in the future in 5G, in the Internet of Things. And we, we believe that that will grow, drive growth over the long term as well. And in fact, we uh, reported this morning that our Internet of Things business is up 30 percent in the last 12 months. Uh, Andrew, how much of this is to do with protecting your dividend to ensure that your dividends are adequately covered by free cash flow? Because we know that telecom companies uh, require a lot of capital expenditure. So how much of this is to do with the dividend? Well, look, over the long term, the best way to support dividends for shareholders is by actually having the right strategy for the company and being successful and growing. Of course, as I mentioned, the telecommunications industry is going through a very challenging and dynamic time. Certainly that's happening globally, but it's particularly the case in Australia because of the rollout of the NBN as well. And we need to take these bold steps now to set us up for success in the future and to support growth in the business because that's ultimately which will, that which will enable us to pay our dividend in the future. Hey everybody, it's Hadley Gamble from our new CNBC Middle East Bureau in Abu Dhabi. Thanks for stopping by. Now to watch more, you can try one of the videos that just popped up on your screen. And don't forget to subscribe.